I'm afraid I didn't quite get that. Get what? The title of the film. Oh, L. M. Erickson in Oman. Our surroundings were magnificent, and working in Oman was a fantastic experience. Around 1970, the country started an enormous development program, and many radical reforms were introduced. You mean things like roads, health service, education, and so on? Yes. And now things are rapidly changing. For people working round the clock, it seems, building airfields and constructing miles and miles of modern roads and... And digging a hole for a telephone pole. We dug thousands of such holes to find out what techniques to use for laying down the coaxial cable. Is that your camp? Yes, our first one for 250 workers. We set up our base in early 74 at Azeba on the coast. We built houses, offices, a mess, and soon technicians from all corners of the globe and administrators and caterers and God knows what were swarming around the place like flies. Some instability here and there before all the wheels started running smoothly. And some wheels never did. Many new roads only existed on drawings when we started. And the old ones taxed our vehicles severely. So to keep us rolling at the speed necessary to meet certain dates and contract, our repair shop had to work day and night. How come Ericsson got the contract? Well, quality, price, and long experience in this type of climate were decisive factors. How big a job was it? Well, it was a turnkey project starting right from scratch and the plans were expanded after we started. So, all in all, our undertakings included a fully subscriber-to-subscriber -subscriber dialing system over the entire network. This comprised 25 local and transit automatic public exchanges and associated power plant, and 13 hops of 960 channel radio links with the potential for introducing colour TV transmission in the future. For spur routes, 200 kilometres of 120 channel coaxial system have been adopted and 24 channel radio links. Outside plants comprise the primary and secondary cables and even the subscriber installations. It's not enough to teach a man all the steps in the process. You have to train him and train him until he's an expert before you can leave him on his own with a job. This telephone scheme... Has That's the Minister of Communications. Now, uh, it may be worth to think of this area. Yes. We will uh, go up and make a survey through the valley up to Nisvabala, how to connect it, if we should go on radio or coaxial cable. Of course, everybody fights hard to keep his part of the job on schedule. It's just that the people working on all the other development projects are fighting too. Ours is just one out of hundreds of timetables haunting people working in Oman. We were dependent on cranes and loaders and trucks. And to get things down to Salala, we needed dows and captains. Back in Stockholm, managing group again. Gentlemen, I, I think we should uh, take the next point to the agenda. I put it as maintenance organization. I asked Mr. Langley to come here and join us today. Mr. Langley from Cable and Wireless. And uh, what do you think, uh, Mr. Langley? Omantel is just formed, and uh, will it be, t be ready to take over the maintenance and operation of the system after takeover? Well, Omantel is arranging to recruit staff, but I think they will be very interested in hearing from you if you have any way of helping them out in the specialist staff which is needed to maintain and operate the system. They'll need staff who are skilled in switching, transmission, microwave engineering, uh, external plant and power. I wonder if it's possible for those of us who always had a telephone to realize what a new life it can be to have a phone within reach. Hello? Of course, it'll take time before the network can be extended to all the remote dwellings in Oman. But the mountains are rich in copper here and there, and then there's oil, so who knows? Like the rising temperature, sunrise sees a different Oman. Muscat becomes an efficient, expanding capital, reflecting a country developing at speed into a high-tech, modern society. And that change has been impressive. Fifteen years ago, there was virtually nothing here. 
In that time, these impressive buildings, the motorways and other forms of communications, satellite stations, the university, the hospitals, the schools, all kept cool by air conditioning, have mushroomed to present a nation progressing at speed. When the present Sultan came to power, succeeding his father in 1971, he had a burning ambition to modernize his nation quickly. Vast modernization schemes started on the coastline where most people live. But there, in those days, it could take five days to cover a journey of around 200 kilometers. There were few cars and even fewer kilometers of paved roads. Fifteen years later, today, the nation is beginning to look like this. Oman is a large nation with only one and a half million people, a country where many small towns and villages still await the advances of modern technology. If you can get a telephone, do you want a telephone? Yes, I want a telephone. Uh, Hello? Hello? Ah! <laughs> In Stockholm, project planning continues at Ericsson Network Engineering. Oman is a big country, and there's still much to be done. Hello. Oman is on the move. A businessman out in the desert might have many urgent matters to discuss. People like him in a nation going places just do not have the time to wait for a telephone cable. <laughs> Go, baby.